Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Well, the latest version of Luminar Neo now has the long-awaited for clone and stamp tool. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use it and how it's different than the erase tool that has been in Luminar Neo from the beginning. Now, very quickly, uh, if you already own Luminar Neo, this is a free update. Uh, when you open Luminar Neo, it should prompt you to update to the latest version that includes the clone and stamp tool. If it doesn't on a Mac, just go up to Luminar Neo and down to check for updates. On a PC, I think that is under the help menu. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo, uh, I'll have a link to their website in the description below this video. And I also have a discount code that will save you $10 off the purchase of Luminar Neo. So be sure to check that out. All right, clone and stamp. How is it different than the erase tool? First of all, let me show you the erase tool that's been here since the beginning. It's up here in the essentials. And with the erase tool, what you would do is find something you want to erase from the image. Let's say these two little flags, and it looks like maybe a leaf right here. And the way you would do this is you would paint over, let's say this leaf, and then paint over this flag over here, and paint over this flag over here, and then click on Erase. And what you're doing is you're allowing Luminar Neo to determine what pixels to use to put in those places to replace that leaf in those two flags. And you could see it did a fine job. The problem with Erase, though, is if you have something relatively large to get rid of, it doesn't work as effectively, and that's where Clone and Stamp comes in. With Clone and Stamp, you're actually telling the application what pixels to use as the replacement for the area you want replaced. Now, the Clone and Stamp tool is found under the Professional section down here at the bottom. As a matter of fact, it's the very bottom tool. And I'll open it up, and you can see it has size, softness, and, softness, and strength. Now, typically, you want to totally erase something, so you're going to want the strength at 100. It's kind of like an opacity slider. So if you had that less than 100, you'd be making like a ghost image, uh, kind of. You wouldn't be totally erasing whatever it is there that you want erased. Softness is the softness of the brush, and usually you want that fairly high so it blends nicely. But if you're doing something that, you know, in front of maybe a chain link fence or something, and you want the ch the uh, edges to be sharp, then you're going to need to pull softness down. And of course, brush size, and we'll talk about that in the moment. Now, the way this works is you have to tell Luminar Neo what pixels to use. And when you first open the tool, like I just did, you'll have this little target. Just click anywhere that you want to, you know, anywhere on the image, uh, that you want Luminar Neo to look at to use pixels to replace the section you want replaced. Now, specifically, I want to get rid of these footprints in the snow. So I have the target, so I'm going to click right there once with the left mouse button. Now you can see I have a large brush, and I'm going to, going to make it a bit smaller. I, of course, could use the slider over there in the tool itself, but I'll use the left bracket key to make it smaller. The right bracket key makes it larger. Now, then all you do is paint. And you'll notice as I'm painting, you see that target, how it's moving around? So it's showing you where it's sampling pixels from and how it's doing. And you can see I'm getting rid of the footprints. Now, there's sometimes going to be the situation where you're repeating patterns, and you usually don't want to do that. For example, if you look right here, there's kind of a mark in the snow and a mark in the snow there, and I repeated it here. So what you'll need to do is resample. And to do that, hold the Alt or Option key, and it's Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac, and then you'll get that little kind of crosshair again, and then you could resample. And I'll resample there, get rid of that one, get rid of that one, and I'll come back up here. So I found with clone and stamp tools in general, that it's best to to resample quite often. You usually get the best work done, and it looks best if you resample quite a bit. So I'll come in here and get rid of all these foot footprints in the snow. And you see I'm sampling quite often as I do it. Now there's another set of footprints going this way. I'll get rid of those. Click right there and just come through and sample 
again, maybe right there, maybe sample there, maybe get rid of this up here and sample. So you can see I could do it very quickly. And yep, just like that. So I got rid of the footprints in the snow and it looks natural and it looks like it should be, right? So it's very easy to use the clone and stamp tool. Just remember that on most instances, you're going to watch uh, softness at 100. It usually blends in very well. But if you have something that you need really sharp edges, then pull softness down. And I can't think of situations that I've ever used the clone and stamp tool in any application where I've needed strength less than 100. So typically that's going to be, going to be at 100. And remember um, to sample often. So if you're removing something fairly long or large like those um, foot footprints in the snow like I just did, uh, you could do it all in one false swoop, but you're repeating all the pixels from the area you sampled and sometimes you'll get a repeating pattern in there. So it's best to do it in little parts, go slow and sample in different areas and you'll see you'll be able to, uh, in almost every case, clone away whatever it is you don't want in your image. So that's the clone and stamp tool finally in Luminar Neo. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. You could check it out. They have fully working free trial. You could try it at home before you buy it. And if you do decide to purchase it, I have that discount code that you could use to save $10. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>